Welcome back. So what have I been doing since I last, last saw you? Well, we, I kneaded the dough for 15 minutes and then I let it rest for another 30 while covered. Let's take a look, shall we? There's our dough now. As you can see, it kind of has a nice shine to it. It's looking really, really good. Um, also, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is this amount of dough, since you're making five times the portion of what I have here, this will be about the size that you're going to use when you put it through the dough machine or um, the other alternative I'll show you you can use. So over here we have our pasta machine. Um, as you can see, there's a handle on it over here. And then there's three places on top of the pasta machine where you can put your dough. The first one are round rollers right here, and there's a little knob over here that you can adjust. And if you look at the rollers, you can see they get bigger and smaller based on how um, you adjust the dial. If you move over to the second one, we have a fettuccine. Um, you can see there's little grooves in the rollers that will help make fettuccine shapes. And last but not least, we have our spaghetti shapes. So let's get to it. I'm gonna go ahead and put my camera over here so we can get started. Welcome back again. So I've got my dough here. I also have my reserve flour that um, I had put out earlier that we didn't use in the actual making of the dough. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little to my dough. It was a little sticky on the bottom. I'm just gonna kind of uh, spread it out just a little bit. We're gonna be putting it through our pasta machine. So I'm gonna make it about the shape of the pasta machine to help it get started. Now when we do this, we wanna start first at the lowest setting on the pasta machine. So what that means is that the rollers will be at their furthest distance apart as possible. And we're gonna put our dough through a few times at this higher setting, and each time we put it through, we're gonna tri-fold it and put it through again. Maybe like three or four times. We just wanna make it smooth and a consistent dough before we start getting into the smaller settings. So we're gonna go ahead and take our dough. It may not be small enough. But it may be, and we're gonna go ahead and roll it through the rollers. You see I put my hand under the machine, I'm catching the dough underneath. So now we have a nice thick, or I'm sorry, a nice longer strand than what we had before. I'm gonna go ahead and tri-fold that, flip it the other direction, and we're gonna go through again. Put my hand underneath, catch the dough. Voila! Do it once more. Try fold it. Take the dough. Push it through the rollers. Hand underneath to catch it so it doesn't fall. All right. Beautiful. We have a nice smooth dough. Now as we're doing it, it's starting to get a little bit tacky. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of flour on the rollers and a little bit of flour on our dough. I'm going to just go and move it to setting one which will pull the rollers a little bit closer together. And pull it through. You'll see I'm putting my hand underneath there. And you'll see as we get to each closer together setting, the dough is getting a little bit longer and a little bit thinner. Go ahead and put it on two. And under to catch it. This is also a fun project if you do uh, with someone else in your family. You get a catcher and you get somebody who's going to do the rollers. Okay. We're on three now. Now, once we get this to a nice consistency, I'm gonna go to, I think I'm gonna do it to five today. See our dough's getting longer and longer the thinner or the smaller the space between those wheels get. Finish it off at number five and then we're gonna talk about what's next. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So here's our pasta and we have it nice and thin. Now, if you don't have a pasta machine, because some of you won't, um, we do have alternatives that you can use. 
You can go ahead and flower your board down with a light, gent gentle um, cascade of flour and just use a roller. You wanna make sure that the pasta is nice and thin though, so take your time. You can see how nice and thin this is. Um, so there's many things that we can do with this. Um, I had intended to do ravioli, unfortunately, um, I used all of my um, fillings that I was gonna use for the inside. So we're just gonna go ahead and do pasta. So I've got my rollers nice and thin, and I don't wanna do spaghetti, I think I wanna do fettuccine. So remember how I showed you there were three different settings? The first one were the, the plain rollers that you can adjust to make uh, closer together or further apart, depending on the thickness of your dough. Um, the second one had little grooves in it, and then the third one had tons of little grooves in it. Well, we're using the middle one, the fettuccine press, or the fettuccine slot. So I'm gonna go ahead, and just like I did with the first roller, I'm gonna take my dough, and I'm going to roll it. Oops, gotta change the handle to the fettuccine roll wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and put my dough in. And get it started. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my hand underneath. It's kind of hard to do it this time because of where the roller is. I'm going to go ahead and catch it anyway. And what have we got? We have beautiful fettuccine noodles. So now the next step for you guys to do is to Take these noodles, and what I would recommend to do is maybe um, put them on a sheet pan with some parchment paper and let them dry out, just for like an hour or so. And then, um, to cook them, what you're gonna do is get a huge pot of water, get it boiling, and when, when I say boiling, I mean a rapid boil. Don't just a little bit of bubbles, we want it to boil hard. Now, the thing about um, fresh pasta is it cooks way faster than the stuff that you get in the box. So you, you'll be uh, cooking this anywhere from 45 seconds if you're going to put it into a sauce later and then it'll cook further in the sauce um, all the way to four minutes if you like it a little bit overcooked and i know some people do i would kind of err toward two minutes if you're just going to put some butter on it or maybe a pesto or something like that um, some other fun things you can do with noodles if you wanted to try and get a little more creative with it um, you can create purees you could put a spinach puree in there which would make these noodles very beautiful and green, or a red pepper puree, which would make them that nice red color you sometimes see in Italian restaurants. Well, I hope this was fun for you guys. Oh, one other thing about uh, cooking your, your noodles. Uh, when you get the water going, you wanna put an excessive amount of salt in there, way more than you think you, you might need. Um, you want it to be, the water to be kind of like the ocean, because the pasta really, really needs it. So maybe, um, you know, depending on how much water you have in there. Just if you were gonna put in like a tablespoon, maybe put in two. Anyway, good luck to you guys. You're gonna love making this pasta. Um, you can use a, a jar of tomato sauce if you want, if you wanna get more fancy. There's so many great recipes online that you can find, and tomato sauce is very easy to make, as well as an Alfredo sauce. I mean, really, um, you can have fun with cooking. You don't need to be afraid. There might be a lot of steps, there might be a lot of ingredients, but none of it is difficult. My best advice to you would be is to get all of your ingredients ready at, first, at, at the beginning and then start cooking. It's called mise en place and it will make cooking so much more enjoyable for you. Well, I hope you've had fun with me. It's been a lot of fun creating this video for you. Um, good luck to you. I hope you get a, a badge for, for doing all this fun stuff and I'm sure you're gonna get lots of praise from your family when they eat your meal. Take care.